The Stream Dock N1 delivers a versatile space saving solution for enhancing productivity and streamlining workflows, be it streaming, music production, video editing, or even gaming. It supports everyday PC activities equipped with 15 customizable buttons, plus, it allows key binding, macro recording, and mouse button assignments. This functionality enables you to assign specific functions or shortcuts to individual buttons, simplifying all your PC tasks. A standout feature here is launching apps, websites, or even documents with one press of a button, offering a convenient way to multitask or access frequently used programs. I also reviewed the VSD inside Stream Dock M18 on this channel, so go check that out. Links will be in the description down below. The N1 includes media controls for effortless audio and video playback management, along with a knob for brightness or volume control. As for streaming, it seems integrates with OBS acting as a centralized hub for scene switching, stream control, and overlay management. Animated icons enhance its visual appeal and later we will go over plugins to unlock even greater functions for your stream dock. In addition to all that, you could even add in many different layouts that you could download from the plugins website which I will show you later on. The Stream Dock N1 package includes the device, a cable, and documentation. Made of plastic, it's not as light as I expected it to be, weighing in at 260 grams. This features 15 customizable LCD display buttons, plus two buttons up top, and a knob that also presses down. The knob by default controls the backlight brightness of the whole dock. Again, all of these are customizable in the VSD Craft app that we will explore in the next segments to come. Size just like a smartphone, this can easily be an extra numpad for your keyboard. By the top side, you will find the USB-C input. Now onto the buttons. The ones on top of the mini screen aren't wobbly which feels good. Just note that there may be some level of inconsistency with button presses in terms of button alignment but that's just due to the rubber domes underneath. Also, the transparent button covers meant to clearly display the mini screens easily collect fingerprints and oil, requiring regular cleaning. So I have here the software of the N1. This is basically the VSD Craft, which is basically the same as the software of the M18, which again, we also reviewed on this channel. So you will have basic scenes right there at the left-hand side, and these are already done for you. They're basically presets for you to explore many of the plugins that you could put onto the buttons. Now let's go over the basics. So you could click on the plus sign right there to add in scenes, click on this plus sign to add in sub scenes, but I'm gonna show you some better ways for you to be able to manage through your stream dock. So over here at the right hand side at the stream dock controls you could add in a folder there and this folder could consist of buttons for say video editing. Add in another folder here and add in the buttons for media consumption like play, pause and it's really easy for you to do that just add in the multimedia button right there and then assign the function for this multimedia button and you could do that uh, if I choose play pause for this one you'll notice that the icons are already changing. And speaking of the icons, you could click on this cog icon right there and click on screen capture. So basically anything that's on your screen, you could screen capture that and turn it into a custom icon for the button or the LCD. Now moving back, I have here the default scene opened and you'll get two buttons right here, which you can customize with editing these two icons right there. So you could choose previous to next scene with just this button, but of course you could assign something different. Say you want to open a website with this button right here, add it right there replace and there you go so this knob by default changes the brightness of your stream dock but you could assign system volume right there click on replace and basically you turn this to the right it will increase volume and you get the logic now going back to changing or editing the keys again you'll have two tabs up here for the key and for the knob now back to the keys, this time let's go over the more advanced options. Now when you open toolbox right here, again, I've shown you a while back how to open a website which we just dragged over there. You could add in hotkeys, you could even add in mouse events. Now let me move this mouse event right there. So not only can you add in mouse clicks, double click or wheel clicks or scroll wheel clicks, but you could also add in mouse movements and then you could assign, I believe these numbers are pixels, which we could also see down here below. So assign some values right there in terms of pixels and you can basically make this your own mouse. Now you could open files with this open button right there. You could open JPEGs, Google Docs, I mean documents, not Google Docs. But if you have a shortcut for a Google Doc, yes, you can open that through this one. You could also open an app right there. You could close a current app similar to an Alt F4. You could add in text macros. You could add in a text macro with more security options, which is 
the password plugin right there. And of course, the multimedia button, which you can assign functions to. Now for the audio player, this is pretty much the same as the multimedia functions. Now operation flow, I have not explored what this does. I think one of the most important aspects of the software is the integration to OBS. You could record, turn on your stream, turn on your virtual camera, turn off or switch scenes with your stream doc. Now, I think this is one of the best features here that I personally would use most of the time because I record using OBS a lot. Now, moving on, we have useful notes right here. If we go to the plugins showcase preset, it's already right here. So you could add in memos, a to-do list right there. You could even add in the calendar, which where you can see the date. I think one cool option here is adding in the time right there. And then you could choose the time zone right here in the drop down list. There's a timer also and a countdown. I believe this is the timer, the countdown, somewhere, somewhere between these two. But yeah, next is the weather query. I'm not sure if you're going to use this. I personally won't, but it's a good add-on. Now for plugins. Now there are extra plugins that you could download for your stream doc. Just click on this button right here. So upon opening the web page of the plugin site of VSD Stream Doc, just click on Stream Doc tab right there, and you'd be greeted with a lot, tons and tons of plugins. Some of the few important plugins that my wife would personally use, and I talked about this in one of my reviews for the VSD M18, the Stocks plugin and the Crypto plugin. This is something she does, and I believe this is something she would be using on a day-to-day -day basis. Moving on, we have here some plugins also that you could download, such as System Monitor. So I would probably be using this because it displays current CPU usage and memory usage. Now, I will be able to see if uh, I'm getting low frame rates. Maybe my CPU usage is too high or maybe memory usage as well. Moving on, you could also add in GPU utilization in one of the LCD screens of your stream dock. So I think, again, this is one of the things that gamers would use. Moving on, we have here custom icons that you could download. Let me scroll through that real quick. Next, you'll have some default scenes, one for OBS, popular websites, and a lot more to download if you're too lazy to set up your own default scene. Here you have some numeric keycaps that you could download to fit your specific keyboard colorway. So say you have a violet keyboard right there, just download this Athena design. It's free. Get that and apply it to your N1. So I think this is one of the coolest features of the N1 being a quick numpad. Anyways, there's that. Let's move on. So if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. Of course, I'll leave links in the description of this video on where to get your VSD inside Stream Doc N1. See you guys again next time.